All right. The uh, currently the Sarek is just about an hour out from the Renda Station. Um, there currently has been no issues. You've been a little over a day, um, close to two days, um, at high warp towards Narendra. Uh, Lieutenant Delix has made a full recovery and is back on duty. Um, Lieutenant, uh, yeah, Lieutenant Calum is currently enacted to his new role as chief engineer, um, but it has otherwise been busy. Unfortunately, he will not be joining us today. At least not until way later if he does come. So. Can find it. Sorry. So we start the scene out in sick bay. Um while your current one of the twins lily newman um is helping you out in sick bay for the time being okie dokie <sighs> uh lily just uh sorry lieutenant uh if you could just move that over there um, I did have a question. Did you, have you thought any more on our conversation about you maybe staying on as part of the staff? I have spoke about it with my sister, Doctor. Um, I mean, she's more interested in staying, um... I am however not really sure. My specialties are better used elsewhere. Typically not on a starship. That's that that is true in most cases. However, in the last however many months he would know, I don't know. Uh you would be surprised how often I could have used a cybernetics expert. Uh, and just another hand in sickbay in general. Um, but, you know, if you feel like you would prefer to have a job on the station or at an outpost somewhere. You know, far be it for me to, you know, stand in any kind of way of that in any capacity. I... Uh... And, um... Yeah, he kind of... Once he realizes he's started being awkward, he kind of just turns and goes back to his office to start filling out paperwork. Because he's like, uh, yeah, that got awkward. I'm going. She follows you to your office like... Lieutenant? I, I get the hint that you... One may say, but you do have plenty of staff... For the most part. Yes. But at the same time. I have to worry about. Okay. You know how I'm the doctor of the ship? Well. In theory you'd be my doctor. Um, because if my eyes go out. You see my dilemma? I see. And you are a very... I will not take that from you, but... None of my staff has the acumen with cybernetics that you do. Personal engineer is more like apt, but yeah.
Give me a um, command plus presence. I know I am betraying my my avatar's face because I am not nearly as charming as he is. Why would I do this with an I think? I mean, honestly, that's probably what someone on the Victoria would do, though, so you got to give Altair a little credit for being subjected to us. I mean, the difficulty I, will I be one. Okay, presence command? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I will... Diplomacy as a focus. Do you have persuasion? I don't. I don't, sadly. I think it, like, manipulator psychiatrically wise. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I guess just take a threat third dice and I will roll it without a focus it may take a because I'm doing weird things <laughs> yeah I don't have none of those click the button but it may take a minute before I click the button again Of a monkey. Okay. Complication. Favorite time. Yeah. You do. She's like. She kind of like smiles, like wondering if that's really all, and goes. Very well, Doctor. I will ask the captain if I can stay on your behalf. Oh, that would have been much There's better. Role. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, I do appreciate. And in your mind, you get the kind of for your from your uh, empath that she might be mistaking you. That it could be more of a love interest that she's thinking you might be into. Yeah, he's thinking I will definitely clear that up um oh uh by the way lieutenant um and ba okay so I as a person cannot do this adequately in real life so um he is going to as politely as possible explain that this is a platonic and professional relationship between the two of them I on the other hand cannot do that <laughs> so uh, give me a control plus command oh, as you God. awkwardly try to explain Don't the situation me. that you came across wrong yeah. is, it, is it at all possible that you could wait till we have an exo that could deal with HR matters because I feel like that's where this is going <laughs> I'm also trying to stay out of HR matters. That's why I'm doing it this way. Um, and what's the difficulty for it? A uh, difficulty two. The kind of piggyback on the complication here. <sighs> On your, your command and control is not that bad, is it? I mean, not really. It's not really that bad. Considering. Uh, 
Um, all right. Um, so control command, take a threat. What's the difficulty? Because you never gave it to me. Uh, I I just two. Oh, two. Okay. If we uh, die because you tried to convince someone you're not into them, it's going to be difficult to handle. Well, I clicked the button. Now we're just waiting. I don't think I did. Oh, I did do it. And no complication. Woo. Oh, I, I, I see, Doctor. Uh, my mistake. But um, I will go. I'll, I'll talk to the captain. Um, if you want to put in a good word for me. I will. Thank you. And she, she, as she exits, she kind of just jokingly winks at you as she walks out. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have a story to tell my wife later. Because everyone here thought that's a great idea. I cleared. Um, but yes, he will start typing out his recommendation to the captain. All right. As he's like, like whoo, dodge that ball. Right, you just barely made the difficulty a two, so that was just probably a simple short like, um, not to be mistaken, but I'm married, so that wouldn't happen. And it probably just, that would have been it. Yeah, something like that. I have a wife, she'll kill both of us. Yeah. With an simple. ice pick, it's very unpleasant. Is there any other RP? Uh, before the ship docks at Narendra. Uh, probably Altera seeking to speak with the captain. Yeah, that sounds good. Do that. I'm, I'm always in the same place. Holodeck, right. Wasting time. Um, no. Uh, yeah, I go up to your... to the captain's ready room. Chime the door. Enter. Hello, Captain. Instant. Um, here. And I hold out a pad. I'll take it and get a brief read of it. My offer to work with the Starfleet engineer, Starfleet Corps of Engineers. And I intend to take it. Got offered it uh, a couple days ago, and uh, well, I wanted to tell you about it, uh, especially since we're taught we we're also uh, discussing not that long ago um, my replacement, sir. Well, I had hoped to keep you at least in one department on this ship, but... I guess this is, uh... This seems an appropriate career move. It seems like the direction you should be headed. Although I can't... I can't say I can imagine what excitement it will bring hmm. being stuck on a star base. Oh, there'll be plenty of engineering challenges ahead of me. I will not have a, uh, I have a, and I have my own project. I'll, I'm being invited to run. So, apparently, I talked myself into a job. Smiles and shrugs. Didn't think that was going to happen, but here I am. It makes it easier if I think you're leaving the ship just because you want to be closer to San Francisco. <laughs> Well, sir, I'm not as attached to the city as most uh, people. I'm not even from Earth, so. Um, but it will be nice to be working on the engine project and other things. Um, I never thought I'd get to work there as. Well, I guess I'm not enlisted anymore. Uh, <laughs> am I, sir? Well, I mean. As long as you pass your test, which I believe you will, you seem to you seem to have a career ahead of you. Now, if I have anything to say about it, sir, 
I plan to fail with every on every measure. Force them to give me that pip. Are you suggesting officers fail upwards, Ensign? Well, never into the captain's chair, but sometimes. Some officers. Some enlisted, apparently. No one I know. Aye, uh, sir. Uh, I have all the uh, projects working out for... Um, for now, I have Delix uh, looking over um, what's going to be going on with the engineering core once uh, until Kalen, until um, the lieutenant gets his feet under him and sorts out the uh, various officers and the departments and so on, and uh, sub departments. Um, I will be leaving all all my uh, existing project uh, project stuff here, but I will be bringing some of the data copies of data with me to Starfleet Core. Of in, uh, to the engineering uh, core, but if he wishes to continue it or Delix wants to continue it, they have my they have our contact information. I'll just pick up what they find out. Hopefully, we are able to. Well, of course, it's your ship, sir. If you want to discontinue them or recycle them, that's not a bad use of the material either. I wouldn't know the first thing about half the things you do down in that bay. I imagine Caleb will have a greater understanding and be able to put it to use. I didn't micromanage you. I don't plan to micromanage him. You might want to micromanage him a little. He needs to understand. You know how to command people. Um, unlike many officers I've worked with. Um, and he needs that. He needs that sort of mentorship if he wants to do well in the engineering uh, departments of ships, whether it's this ship or any other. A good engineer is a great crewman, but a chief engineer needs to be someone everyone can trust won't get them killed. Or if they are going to get them killed, it's for a very good reason. It's kind of like a captain like that, except less prestigious, and uh, we don't get high rank usually. Well, some of us do, but... Anyway, sir, um, it'll be nice. I hope everything goes well with the Sarek. And if you ever need any, if you need a, uh, a little bit of help from the core, uh, I'll be sure to put in whatever word I can as a upcoming ensign. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure you won't be an ensign for long. <laughs> oh, don't curse me like that, sir. Uh, but yes, sir, th uh, that is all, unless uh, there's any other questions or anything you want me to settle before we uh, dock with uh, Starbase, because I'm supposed to be transferring out there uh, once we get there. I have to catch the next uh, shuttle heading back to Earth, and that's a long journey, I'm told. So, No, Ensign. Um, I think I can say that it's been an honor, and I wish you the best. Same to you, sir. Heaven bless you. You're going to get a slightly odd look at that one because he's never heard you say anything like that before. But then mm -hmm. he's, he'll just go back to his paperwork. He won't even say dismiss. Sir? And she uh, leaves the room. Her assassination plot foiled. Next time. Next time, <laughs> Gadget. Next time. Narendra explodes. I wonder who could have done that. Just yeah, taking well, after just my predecessor. Yeah. <laughs> dropped off Altera. And close to Kurt. Yep, yep, nope. Two and two. Um. 
Cleric, do you have anything you wish to roleplay with? Or roleplay on, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's gonna also uh, stop by the captain's office uh, to talk about what happened last. Uh, as soon as you ping, you'll get a, uh, enter. Captain? Lieutenant? Um, just a few questions about our last encounter. Is this something Starfleet experiences often? Uh, last encounter with what? We've had a busy time in the last week, Lieutenant. Well, it seems like we often encounter um, phenomenon that de defies traditional explanations of physics or uh, beings of incredible power. I just wanted to know oh. if this was a common occurrence in, in Federation you're, duty. You're talking about the Q. Um... It, sure. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Q are a... Uh, they're a species like any other, but... Uh, the best I can put it, they've hit the singularity. So... They... What they are is beyond us at this point, but apparently we are not beyond their interests. They are to be ignored and generally avoided unless they make themselves unavoidable hmm well I guess I should consider my last interaction successful as it went on its way fairly quickly after trying to bait me into being its entertainer I would um I would not go so far as to say that you weren't its entertainment. You definitely entertained it. Uh, it's the degree to which you entertained it that I guess could have been minimized. Hmm. Any suggestions, Captain? Uh, there is absolutely nothing you can do. They are beyond our understanding in any reasonable way. So there are no known countermeasures to the cube. I've heard of at least one person who's outmaneuvered them, and they they tend to stick to their word. So if you fancy yourself a wordsmith, you might be able to convince them of things or get them to agree to things that are advantageous for yourself, but I have yet to seen it I have never seen it done although I've only ever met one Q so I can't say that I've had the chance to see it done but hmm. they say it can be done If you have any materials on this I would be happy to read them I can't say I am used to using charm to diffuse situations. However, I, anything that's a viable security measure, including conversation, is apparently up for grabs, and I'd like to be prepared. I'm sure there's a riveting read in the ship's computer about it. Uh, you could start there. And if you read that, you'll know the sum total of everything we know about the queue. And it's probably about a paragraph long. Under Understood. I will check the computers. Um, I appreciate your time. And uh, she says, uh, I think that's it. Uh, Lieutenant, go ahead and start running me 
run me simulations for engagements between the Seric and one to three to Daredexes and see what you can learn about viable strategies. Is there a particular scenario that you're envisioning? I want a universal strategy. So all of them, all of them. Uh, understood. Uh, I will begin uh, this shortly. Uh, is there a, a deadline uh, for my summation of tech? Uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Star X can handle most of your duties. So tomorrow. Okay, uh, it will be done. Anything else, Lieutenant? Uh, nope, uh, that is all. Lieutenant, have you put any thought into to your permanency in Starfleet or your potential return to the KDF? Permission to speak freely, Captain. Sure. I guess I'll give you the warning that is applicable. Don't hang yourself with your own words here. But yes. <laughs> uh, well, um, I can't say that my time in the KDF was completely satisfying. And I have to say, my time aboard the Sarek has been curious and interesting um, and a lot less bureaucratic than I had assumed. Um, I, however, do not know if I am the kind of person that Starfleet would want to keep. So I think and that is an evolving situation. We kept Altera. When you when you learn what kind of officer Starfleet wants, then you may know enough to decide. I think that is a, a true statement, Captain. Uh, and I believe I'm in the midst of figuring that out. If you don't mind me asking, how did you come to join Starfleet? I mean, it was the plan because I'm not a, I'm not the firstborn of the family, so I'm set to inherit nothing, or I was set to inherit nothing, so I had to go somewhere. And Starfleet was the the place to be for the up and coming, and. Sure. When I when I was of that age, I had just left Romulus with no plans. So I just I just joined up because it was the thing you were supposed to do. Uh, she definitely spocks her eyebrow at the mention of Romulus. Is would it be a fair assessment that it was a stroke of luck or a matter of convenience more than passion or particular interest I mean I enjoyed I enjoy I've enjoyed my time once I started and 
the various the various there have been various points in my career which have hammered me into the officer that I am today but it's always been a profession I don't I didn't join Starfleet to go scanning stars and finding curious aliens like some officers but I've made a career out of it and it's done I've done well by myself and I've Starfleet's done well by me Are you satisfied? I could say yes. I can't speak of it from a from a perspective that that a Klingon might understand because our lifespans are different. To me, this is, to me, I could have a full career and only be middle-aged. So it's not as much of a commitment to me as you might feel. That is an unexpected comment coming from someone who is entrusted with the command of a starship. If you ever find a captain who puts passion before professionalism, you may find yourself in a very dangerous situation. Those captains tend to put their ships and their crews in very unhospitable territory. Hmm. It's an interesting perspective. definitely one you won't hear in your first year at the academy not that you would have ever been to the academy but hmm. no. i have a feeling that if i would have went that route my current situation would be off the table and she's Well, I appreciate your, do the humans call it, um, a travel down memory lane? It was illuminating. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Well, I... Uh, I do have uh, a security checklist uh, to get to, so if you don't mind, uh, is there anything else on your side that you wish from No. Uh, just have me those simulations tomorrow. Will do. And she turns. All right. Um, a few moments go by, Captain. Um, you do get um, ping on your door. I look at the pad that I'm trying to read like, God, when am I ever going to get a chance to finish reading this pad? <laughs> and go. Enter. Um, in walks in, um, one of the Lieutenant Newmans, and she hands you a pad. Um, I look at the pad trying to figure out which Lieutenant Newman this is. <laughs> it is Lily. Okay. And you would have already gotten the doctor's recommendation. Well, I wouldn't have had time to read it. I mean, that's fair. Uh, Captain, when it's uh, available at the time, um, I have discussed it with the doctor. Um, I am not sure if you 
read his recommendation yet, but if you don't mind, I would like to stay on board uh, along with my sister. And what do you hope to do here? Um, I'll be working in the medical department, assisting the not, doctor. Not, not what are you going to do while you're here? What do you hope to do while you're here? If you don't mind, I would like to set up my own lab, but um, and begin work on some more pioneering of my cybernetic research. That sounds good. If I bring on an engineer or a security officer, I bring them on with a very specific task in mind. Thou, those reasons, though, that that logic does not apply to scientists and most doctors. They don't need to be here, and I don't necessarily need them here. So if you have a reason that you want to be here and you think that it would bring a benefit to this ship and the Federation, then I have every reason to keep you here. My reasons are more personal in nature. Um, as for my research, it can technically theoretically be done anywhere else. The doctor feels that I would be an asset to his staff with giving my field of study. I'll take it under advisement, Lieutenant. I, this is not... This, I, I don't intend to keep you here because your sister's here. And if that's the sole reason, it's not entirely, I don't see the value to me. If you would rather be someone else, somewhere else doing your research, that's probably the best. I'm not saying no. I'll read what the doctor wrote and think about it, but um, unless, Unless you can come up with a reason why you want to be out on the edge of space and why Starfleet would benefit from it, then I suggest you make other arrangements. If I could, there'd be a twinge of pain in the captain's head, but I can't, so I'm sad. Anyway. I I uh I understand, Captain. Um, well, I hope you find a reason. Was there anything else, Lieutenant? Uh, no, sir. You're dismissed. Yes, sir. And she exits your ready room. Is there anything else? I'm gonna read this damn pad. All right. <laughs> what do you know? It's the doctor's recommendation. Huh, go figure. Delix, do you have anything you wish to uh, RP with? Talking to, the, uh, let's see, I've probably got done talking to the counselor regarding the PTSD of being gutted. Um, physicals and all that, the doctors released me. So I think I would we just could, be in engineering, because, you know, like, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, we could RP that out if you want.
Um, since he's not really my character technically, we don't have to go that deep with it, with him. I don't think, not unless you would like. I'm. I, I guess I'm in the middle, either or. Up to you. I, it's purely up to you. It's the character gotcha. you're playing. Understood. So I think right now that would have already happened, and he would be, you know, and he's he he's cool, and and like I said, if if uh, all with counseling and uh, everything went well with the doctor, in the sense of what the doctor reads after that, she's put me back to duty. I would be back in engineering, um, knowing that uh, Altera is well i think he's an ops and moving there you know that's my thought right now still so i i did tell my replacement is coming uh keeping engineer to earring together and maybe there's a part of me that's like because we're docking with narendra uh uh texts you know will be going back and forth and i don't want them to see a messy engineering by any means even though everything's clean you know altera knows what i mean <laughs> so I'm going through like trying to make sure everything's like perfect kind of thing. Yeah. All right. And just just for Delix's clarification, the doctor is a male, Altera is a female. So, oh, yes, absolutely. Got uh, somewhere I will brain lock that I need to flip that. So working on it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. All right, uh, Captain. It's not uh, not too long, um, and then you get a ping from uh, the bridge that they are approaching Narendra. I'll walk out onto the bridge, Lieutenant or Ensign Ensign Altera. How long do we have? Uh, estimating now. Stand by. Now uh, Dylan freaks out. Just for a few minutes, sir. Uh, say no more than ten. Uh, open a shipwide channel. All hands, the captain is speaking with you. We will be docking with Narendra in a few minutes. Let's... Talk to your department heads about shore leave and that's all. Uh, we don't have Riker yet. So I think who's our other Helms person? Teeks. Instant Teeks. Let's prepare for docking. Understood, sir. Teeks, I'll patch you in with flight control at the starbase so they can you can work with them. They should be able to lead you in with the base that big. Well, when we get closer, uh, all due respect, it's pretty much automated at this point. Ops, let's hail Narendra and give them the customary don't shoot us. Aye, sir. Friend or foe signal being sent. Hailing Narendra Station. USS Sarek to Narendra. This is Narendra. Welcome back home, uh, Sarek. It's good to be back, Narendra. I guess send uh, send the flight details over to our uh, our flight director. Understood. Sarek out, and I'll just take my seat and wait. And uh, USA, uh, Narendra comes back and says, USS Sarek, prepare for automation control and enjoy the ride. As Teeks lets go of his hands for the controls, the Starbase takes over and controls the Sarek into docking.
the Serica slowly enters the uh, the starbase, uh, pulls ahead. Um, currently, there are no starships currently docked at Narendra, so you're the only one. Uh, pulls into uh, one of the first uh, docking ports. The docking collapse engages, and the hatch and uh, well stairway hatch extends and. Docking complete. Lieutenant Takarik. Takarik here. Go ahead and choose uh, one security personnel per docking clamp and uh, have them check passes in and out. And go ahead and make a. Uh, go ahead and push the leave schedule out to the department heads. Two days for everybody. You understood. Well, that's awfully nice of the captain. Yeah. I will make my way down to sick bay then. Uh, when I arrive, Doctor? Yes, Captain. As you're the closest thing I have to an executive officer, you might, it might be appropriate for you to come uh, when I go calling on the app. Very well. Uh, he gets up from his desk, takes off his jacket, hangs it up, and says, after you, Captain. After saying, um, Reaver, when you finish here, you're free to go on leave. Uh, I will go walk with the doctor to go see the Admiral then. Yep. And I guess everyone else is freed from any obligations they had. Except for Tip Carrick, he's got a, a report that's due tomorrow. Uh, bridge to the captain. <laughs> yes, Altera? Uh, I have standing orders from Narendra. Uh, no one's to leave from the Serac at this time. Uh, Admiral me. is on her way. Uh, it's the last communication I just got. So I guess docking... The docking hatch. Ensign... Captain? Ensign, go ahead and um, Ensign, go ahead and inform to Carrick to rescind all leave uh, with the communication that the Admiral has rescinded all leave. And make sure you put that first part in there, Ensign. Aye, sir. I'll forward the uh, message off to, to Carrick right now. Just we have it on record, if nothing else. Yeah. And in your mind as we're walking, ever feel like you're about to be blamed for something you didn't do as they're walking? Hey, do you know something I don't? No, it's just a hunch. I'll be walking to meet the Admiral at the airlock then. Yes, and the doctor will be following. All right, you approach the airlock. Um, standing there is Admiral Hepburn and another uh, commander. Sorry, Admiral, we would have had a proper ceremony, but uh, we were unaware you were coming onto the ceremony. I have new standing orders for you, Captain. Can we uh, head towards your uh, ready room? Uh, yes, Admiral. This way. And and the doctor's gonna get uh, like an oh fuck, what is this about? And uh, he gets it back in return. Am I following? T 
take the chair. And he just follows them to the bridge, and only the bridge. <laughs> Takes the center chair. While they do their thing. Um, for the most part, it's fairly quiet. Um, the Admiral's mind, is, if you're trying to read her, is pretty scattered at the moment with a bunch of different thoughts. Um, she has a only, full docket, apparently. Yeah. Only passively, as, as I would just hearing, you know, passive noises in the background, but I definitely am not intentionally trying to read her mind. It is, it's, yeah, it's nothing like out of the ordinary for like an admiral just they're constantly thinking about random different things of what has to be done so to speak um so you the four of you enter your ready room oh i guess i did follow that's fine he's gonna look very confused at why you follow okay i <laughs> sorry the three of you enter the room yeah, because I took the chair. Bay. No, I took right. the chair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you took the chair? Okay. My bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Admiral, can can I have the yeoman bring you anything? Uh, no, I won't be here long, Captain. This is uh, Commander uh, Joan. Am I saying that right? Yes, Admiral. Well, I was out of character, by the way. But Oh. But yes, it is. Okay. He will be your new executive officer due to uh, Commander Prax's recent transfer. Um, I am ordering the Sarek um, back out uh, near in the deeper in the Shackleton Expanse, uh, close to where you were before, near the Romulan territory. There seems to be activity um, that we need to be monitoring. Uh, there is a lot of commotion lately within the uh, Romulan government and along their borders as well. Um, we're hoping this doesn't spill out um, into the Federation territory, but it's currently all hands on deck. As I for see. your current passengers, they will be transferred to Narendra unless you have uh, any other crew transfers that you wish to conduct. We have a few standard crew members who've accepted or been posted somewhere else that'll transfer off, and some that have accepted positions on the Sarek that should be transferring on. And I've got survivors of a starbase. Um, I know one of them has asked for a position on the Sarek. I felt inclined to accept it because of who they were and how they asked. But other than that, I think f we should be having 55 people trans uh, extra personnel transfer onto the station. Very well. Um, I see no reason. Um, as for these individuals, um, they will have to be debriefed by uh, Starfleet Intelligence um, before they're allowed to serve aboard the CERC. I will I will write up the paperwork to have them temporarily transferred to Narendra so that can be carried. I believe we could probably handle their uh, debriefing here on the CERC. I just assumed with what was going on that Starfleet Intelligence might want to be a little bit more thorough. I'll leave them up to their to their discretion whether or not uh, these individuals. Uh... Are you just saying the one? I want both of them, but out of the character. The captain's being weird. I only out said one, but the other one still has the opportunity to stay, but I doubt it's going to happen. Okay. That's fair, I guess. Not really. I'll deal.
Yeah, yeah. No cybernetics expert for me. Commander uh, Joanne, is there any questions you have of me before I depart? No, Admiral, no questions at this time, sir. Very well. Um, Admiral, I will, or sorry, Captain, I will be giving you your orders here shortly, as um, soon as we are ready to allow you to disembark. I do have a few questions, Admiral. Of course. Or at least some of them may be requests. Um, I do request that the Sarek be assigned a more capable uh, for lack of a better term warship uh, on station. I know this mission may not be so important to assign two or three ships to a small task force to handle, but I have encountered no less than four individual Romulan warships and a fleet of Romulan warships in the last week, and at least one of those had extremely hostile intent, and the Sarek is not a warship, ma'am, so although I will carry out my orders to my be the best of my ability, it does put the Sarek in a very dangerous position, and there is not an insignificant risk that we could be damaged or destroyed. I've also included in my report the fact that we did have a ship destroyed, with, lost with all hands by a Romulan, what we, ex what we suspect was a Romulan ship. So the Sarek yes, out there on the edge of space is in a very dangerous position if it's alone. Yes, the loss of the Tempest is uh, most troubling. But unfortunately, it takes weeks just to get uh, ships over here from the Alpha Quadrant, Captain. Um, and we need all ships available for patrol reasons at the moment, uh, in case this does blow over into the Shackleton Expanse even more. I believe uh, the commander here can fill you on any of the necessary details, but for now, your saying orders when you depart is going, is going to be a patrol near region of space that you were already at. I have no further questions, Admiral. Well, Commander, I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it, leave it to you. And she exits the room. Admiral? Captain? You're a quite brave commander. Why do you say that, sir? Joining a ship in what may be her final hours. Ah, you're not on fire and everything's together, so uh, I think you're doing a fair shot better. I don't think you're dead yet. And now I'm here, so everything should be fine. Well, with any luck, you'll keep us from dying, commander. Uh, that's why they don't pay me. Sir. So, you are my new XO. Aye, sir, that I am. Joan of Risa. Pleasure to meet you, and I have read up about you, actually. Well, it's kind of what I'm supposed to do, sir, but... Uh, interesting reading, if nothing else. Well, why don't you give me the highlights, and then explain to me what qualifies you to hold that position, or this position. Well, I would like to believe my resume speaks for itself, but since I'm being asked, and it's by a captain so it's in order, the thing is that you have faced off, let's see, with the Borg and in other various uh, overwhelming circumstances where you needed tactical advice that required a bit more uh, perhaps finesse or even brute force at certain times. And in those instances, I have unfortunately the pleasure of having battle experience. So I have uh, been a study of various tactical formations Although I'll have to do it with just one ship, but I've dealt with that before since the war. Um, 
There are certain diplomatic situations that could have been possibly dialed down, such as the Archon situation, although reading back in reports, it seemed like that was something someone else screwed up, so that's not really your fault. But I think I could have helped out with certain uh, personnel and interpersonal situations. Also, you seem to have an HR problem, uh, and you have certain crew members aboard, or had, who decided to take matters into their own hands, and certain times one needs to step forward and crush that in its infancy. Uh, or give a hug when's necessary. And, well, captains can't give hugs. It's against the rules. Uh, but cap- commanders can do that. Uh, medical can do it, too. But uh, your uh, doctor is uh, not the cuddly type, so well, you'll just have to deal with me. Um, other than that, um, I am probably the most flexible officer you're going to see who's going to help you in any way I can and is going to give you gruff about it. But I will be honest with you. So you can trust on that. More honest than most any other officer in the fleet, sadly. But that is the reality of our current situation. And nothing to complain about, just the way things are. Sir. And your appraisal of your... uh, The reasons that you should hold this position, or your qualifications for this position? are the business of the Admiralty and Starfleet Command, but if I wish to prove myself to you, the only way I can do that to you, for you, sir, is to show you in action. For me to read off my resume to you or to do a song and dance and pretend to you that I actually know the deep soul of your people and your crew, that's an insult to you and your crew. I need to get to know these people and they're not gonna trust me worth a damn because, pardon the phrase, sir, but they don't know me from Adam. Uh, they don't know me from a hole in the wall. I'm just a guy in a red suit with three pips and that's all they're gonna see until I prove myself to them. Uh, and the only way that can happen is under fire. Well, hopefully under just simple things, but we'll have to see how this mission goes before we can truly see if I'm worth it to be aboard the Sarek. You certainly have a plethora of words to say commander i i was actually interested in hearing you tell me about your resume uh there was no slight intended towards you oh no slight was taken i mean if you were going to insult me you would have just had me scrubbing decks for a while which you could do please do not do that sir um but well uh long story short uh i have a battle tactic named after me which uh Almost took back Beta Z, and then someone with more buttons than me decided to kill a bunch of people with my tactic, which almost worked, much to my annoyance. Um, Let's see, what else have I done? I am the forefront of flight uh, regulations and protocol on Beta Z flight uh, parameters and aeroflight. Atmospheric flight is the more proper term, but it's listed at aeroflight because someone in Starfleet Command hates me. Um, Beyond that, I'm a trained astrophysicist, uh, as as we all do in the Academy, of course. And I don't know how much it's going to apply since we're nowhere near them, but I am well read on the Breen, and I'm used to warlike people. So at least in this mission, dealing with the Romulans is, is going to be a breeze, since they actually, you know, talk to us rather than just stare at us blankly and hope we answer them. Sir. Uh, did I answer the question, sir? I might have... Uh, I I get the feeling that I might have uh, blustered you a bit. You, you definitely are a bit overwhelming when it comes to oratory. Uh, that might take some getting used to. My last XO was much more reserved. Well, that's my job to be an annoyance, sir, at least in private. Uh, on the bridge and in combat situations, I understand the brevity is what saves lives. When it comes to red alerts and yellow alerts, sometimes, depends, of course, sir. Um, it's a lot more... My job is to make sure your orders are followed. And when we're getting shot at, me getting verbose gets people killed. And I don't want to do that. Even if these people are, Even if these are people I've never met before... Uh, it's my duty to keep them all alive and keep the ship flying. So don't worry about that, sir. I may bluster you in here. Well, not intentionally. I may talk to you a lot in here, sir, but I won't do that to you uh, while on duty. Sir. That seems to be in line with what I intend. In fact, have you ever... Have, did you take much military history at the Academy? I'm not at the Academy, no, sir, but when the Dominion War started, uh, I became a quick study. Kind of had to. Uh, Otherwise, everyone under me would have died, and I would have died, but yeah. I refer Uh, more to to more ancient warfare, 
particularly uh, ancient naval warfare on Earth. Ancient naval warfare on Earth. Uh, how ancient are we talking? 20th, 21st, 19th, 18th? Oh, not second century. Please no. No. Okay. Mostly 16th to 19th. 16th, 19th. You're, you're, you're aware of the, um, the dichotomy between the master and the commander of a vessel? I'll try the forward of you, Captain, but yes, I am aware, sir. That's how I intend this ship to be run. In all things, you will most of the time be considered the master of this vessel, and your authority over it will be near absolute, save some brief inputs I may give you. When we are in combat, I am the commander of this vessel, and it is under my absolute control and I expect you to respect that with what little input is necessary I feel like this arrangement is the best arrangement for both of us well sir that works perfectly fine for me uh... The only thing I would add is that I would like to reserve some right, although I think this was applicable back in that era. I'd have to read up on it to be 100% sure, so forgive me for lying if I accidentally do so. But uh, I would like to make sure that I have your ear, at least here privately in the ready room, for certain... Um, what is the phrase that I've used? Um, certain advisories, since at the end of the day, uh, as you say, you are the commander of the ship. Uh, even if I am the master of it, you are the commander of it, and at the end of the day, I need to make sure that you're okay with things before I start uh, hauling things out and cleaning them out of barnacles, as it were. Um, that's not something a XO does. Not in the modern uh, fleet, anyway. I mean, if we had 14-year-old children, we could probably get them to do it, but I don't think that's regulation anymore, sir. I mean... With the diversity of this crew, I'm sure I have at least one 14-year-old serving under me. Not you that know, that... I'm, I'm, I'm half inclined to agree, uh, agree with you, sir, but uh, that would be a failure of Starfleet Intelligence or your Klingon security officer, but I doubt one of those things have happened. Oh, you meant a civilian, not someone in uniform. Oh, that makes more sense, actually. No, I was referring to the fact that we have very different lifespans, Commander. I definitely am, I am sure there's at least one crew member on this ship who's not expected to live past 40, and who is right now middle-aged at the age of 17. I suppose that is a thing. That is true, sir. Uh, I suppose in the relative sense, but I get what you mean, sir. Children, then, sir. If we have small children that we shove into little holes to clean things out, uh, uh, you might want me to not do that. I've never stood in the way of someone getting a proper education. He says that jokingly. Oh, sir, you have no idea how good it is to serve with the beta Z. A lot less, a lot more easygoing and a lot less stuck in their uniform. Well, I think the next, the most appropriate step, uh, we have at least one or two crew members who need to be debriefed, so we'll be here for at least one to two shifts. So let's step out onto the bridge. We'll get that situated, and then I will take you to meet the department head. Very good, Captain. Lead the way. I, love I, this. I will stand up out of the chair and move aside. Also, empathically scanning the commander. Um, Lieutenant Takarik. Uh, Takarik here. Uh, is it uh, correct? Uh, I've been told that uh, all leave is canceled, and I am not to allow people to come and go. 
Lieutenant, the Admiral has canceled all leave. Interesting. And, okay, understood. And no one is to... None of the crew members are to leave the ship. However, I need you to uh, contact op the operations on the Starbase and inform them that they can send over uh, the personnel to debrief the survivors of the Starbase. So why don't you have those people gather in the... Uh, in one of the cargo bays. Well, we don't really have an available cargo bay. Have them have them meet in um, the mess hall and uh, send send the the Starfleet intelligence officers there to debrief them. Yeah. Understood. The doc the doctor is going to look at the commander and just kind of tilt his head and just say out loud, "Interesting." Huh. Captain. <clears throat> Commander, this is our chief medical officer. And for most purposes, our second officer, Lieutenant Commander Starix. Most people just call me doctor, but nice to meet you, Commander. Commander Joan, at your service. Nice to meet you, Dr. Starix. I believe it's Dr. Starix as the appropriate address as you've been adopted, yes? It, it is. Very good. And the, cap, and the captain will get a message in his brain, in his mind, like, who is this guy? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he continues with the pleasantries. This is, uh, Doctor, this is our new executive officer, Lieutenant Ryzen? Joan. Commander Joan, sir. Oh, so did they do the first name first, too? No, the he's from Ryza. That's no. why he said it that way. Well, I thought I looked at the character sheet and the last name was Ryza is why I said that. Do I know your last name? Uh, doesn't have a last name. It's not a thing they do. Oh, Joan. that yeah. would make more sense. <laughs> this is our new executive officer, Commander Joan. Ah. Uh, so I am to take it Commander Prax is not going to be joining us again. The commander has gone on to greater things. Fair At least I well. think. I don't think she knows what she's doing yet, but I can only I assume. I, will, I guess I will have to send some of the treatments I made for Trill to the Starfleet Medical. Um, very well. Well, Doctor, will leave you to the chair. I, very well. And we'll walk over to help. This is... Oh, wait. No, you're not at helm, because you're an engineer now. What am I talking about? Uh, we'll walk over to Takarik. This is Lieutenant Takarik. Lieutenant Takarik, this is our new XO, Commander Joan. Sure. Hello, Lieutenant. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, you enjoy a... Rather interesting uh, personnel file when I looked over it. Uh, how are you enjoying Starfleet, by the way? It's been interesting. <laughs> well, at least, you didn't, at least you're being honest. Uh, interesting is a word to use when dealing with uh, a bunch of uniforms. Are you all brushed up on uh, protocol and all that fun stuff in the rather lengthy documentation of how to be an officer in Starfleet? I think I'm adequately informed, yes. Well, very good. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to knock on my door anytime, and I'll be sure to help you with it in any way I can, or point you at someone who knows what they're doing. Either way works. Uh, she's going to turn to the captain and give the captain, like, 
a very hard stare, and then back to the first officer. Thank you. Did did I get an emotion when you did that? Yes, you did. <laughs> Would you like to describe that? Um, like, who is this? And it, I don't know how to describe it as an emotion, but it's the feeling of, like, both of, like, kind of what the hell, but also, like, I'm going to have to deal with this every <laughs> the, so... captain, the captain's going to look at you and say... Well, um... Confusing annoyance um, would be what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm glad y'all have had a chance to meet. To Carrick, I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that you schedule some time with the command. Uh, you seem to have lost a, a... or not entirely read up on proper protocol between... and proper behavior between officers, so I'll let the commander handle that as one of his first actions. Noted, sir. I'll be sure to schedule it so it doesn't interfere with their duties. Thank you, Commander. And you'll get a very disapproving look from the captain. Uh, and then, oh, we do not have an Altera to introduce. Actually, I get. No one's left the ship, so we do, but we won't. <laughs> um, I guess our next stop would be engineering. Oh, yes, I saw that you had a bit of a shuffle there between the engineers. You have, like, a chief engineer, a standing possible engineer, and then you had a enlistee? No, uh, acting ensign. That was your chief engineer, yes? The acting ensign is moving on to work directly with the Corps of Engineers. And oh. I point over to Altera, who's standing right there, and go, "This is it's uh, Ensign Altera, but uh, he won't be on the ship, but, you know... Uh, until she. we exchange personnel. She won't be on the ship until we exchange personnel. Um, Hello. Yes. Um, and no, we have an official chief engineer. His name is Lieutenant... Uh, he's a Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Calum. But there is some... I will be requiring you to give him more attention than any other department head for a few months until he adjusts to his new role. Yes, Captain, understood. Uh, ooh, junior grade taking on a department. I mean, it's been done, but that's rough. I'll be able to help him out. Although, I mean, he has engineering know-how, but wasn't he your uh, flight controller, sir? Yes, but um, as I'm sure you're aware, flight control, uh, we have maybe th three officers and 30 crewmen who are in that department. Engineering accounts for nearly a third of the ship's complement, so. Oh, the numbers work out. You don't need a dedicated flight unless you decide to be do a bunch of shuttle work, which makes my job a little harder, but I knew that coming here. Which, hooray, at least I don't have to butt heads with the flight director here. Good news is good news. Yeah, most of the fleet's talented flight controllers and pilots are assigned to another ship. I believe the Everest, since they're a little flotilla of their little own puzzling ship, but uh, outside of wartime. Then again, we were at war not that long ago, technically. Pleasant thoughts. Anyway. It's best not to ever consider yourself outside of wartime on the border. I, sir, agree with that. And he'll motion towards the direction towards engineering. Follow after you. Just kind of a lot of paying attention largely to you, but still doing the rubbernecking, like looking around at the various things at the at the shiny new, well, shiny new, but the a working ambassador ship. Like, ooh, neat. It's not in a museum or anything. You know? he'll, with that bit of curiosity from you, he'll he'll give a quite like a. We do have a very 
archaic vessel, but we've had a couple of good engineers who've made her almost the rival of some of the older galaxies. Or at least in our hearts she is. I sir, I see what you mean. Uh, you make the most of what you got, and it's frankly, in my uh, experience, sir, it's the crew that makes the ship, not the ship that makes the crew. Unless it's an Obrith, then uh, it's larger the ship that makes the crew. Or Miranda, I suppose. But anyway, sir, yes. I think you I've appreciate made, the sentiment. I've made... I made the first part of my career on Miranda's. And I can say that if I had to make the first part of my career on an Obrith, I think <laughs> I would still be a lieutenant. <laughs> I don't know, take up the sciences. Discover a new alien species or microbe or something. They might give you Commander Pip. I'm sure it would be an exciting life. <laughs> Aye, sir. And I guess you can describe to us what engineering looks like. Uh, chaos and disorder. No. Um... I was going to let Caleb yeah. say whatever he wanted to say and set it up. Oh, okay. I will let so, um, Caleb do that now. Okay. So, uh, Caleb is running from, like, console to console. Check it, checks on an incense, and he goes, No, 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 no. This one goes here. That one goes there. And, uh... I mean, it's basically, he's trying to get everything standard maintenance done, and it's just crazy right now. Uh, I will lead the commander to, like, right in front of you while you're standing, staring at whatever your console you're staring at, and we'll just wait. <laughs> okay. At that point, he's going to look up, see the captain, and jump. And be like, oh, Captain, I didn't see you there. Captain in engineering, I suppose. I don't think I've been down here in two or three weeks, actually. That's what XOs yeah, are for. It's very rare we see you down here, sir. So how is my engine? Purring like a kitten right now? That's good. Well, this is Commander Joan, our new XO, and Commander, this is Lieutenant Junior Grade Calum. Commander? Hello, Lieutenant. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. Pleasure to meet a fellow pilot. Although now you've uh, gone in the dregs with a bunch of engineers. I'm kidding. You're the reason we're not all dead. Well, according to Starfleet records, I'm not the only pilot who's gone engineer. That's true. That's true. It's happened quite a bit. But, uh, oh, well, sometimes the best officers come from the flight corps. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't think you'll find any disagreement among the three of us that pilots <laughs> make great officers. See, you're allowed to say that, so you're the captain. I'm not supposed to do that. I'll have sour coffee. I keep that joke up. Or powder for coffee. Ugh. Anyway, uh, so what can you tell me about this uh, engine there, Lieutenant? You know your ins and outs of it? Uh. Oh, sorry. I meant the people, not the actual engine. My mistake. The engineering people. The team. Oh. Uh, well, as of right now, uh, Lieutenant Leva is getting ready to go over into operations, but she's been helping out here recently. Uh... Let's see. I need to look at the NPC list. <laughs> Delix has been a big help. Oh, yeah. Delix <laughs> has definitely been a big, big help because, I mean, he's basically known the ins and outs of this thing for a lot longer than I have. Uh, Do we see Lieutenant Delix anywhere around? He could be uh, maybe, like, checking uh, the warp, warp core with the tricorder, just you know, like doing the scans and, and taking notes on a pad, maybe, you know, 20 feet away or whatever. Okay. Uh, Tib right now is running a diagnostics on our transporter systems, making sure they're all up to snuff. Don't want any 
random power outages like we did last time, sir. Well, they weren't entirely random, Caleb, but yes, we do want safeties in place. You're you're correct, sir. They weren't entirely random. It it was from a extended period of non-maintenance. Well, Lieutenant, I do have a... Have you signed up for the uh, auxiliary courses uh, put forth by uh, Starfleet Academy to get you up to speed? I know most of your uh, record shows that you were educated as a uh, specialist pilot or shuttle pilot rather than... Or even a high-speed shuttle uh, starship pilot. But uh, engineering's hard work. I have did a stint for like all of five minutes and I hate it every minute, but uh, you're going to be, you're the head honcho. So I need to make sure that you're up, you're well read. I mean, I would appreciate some of those secondary courses, sir, but, uh, and you're correct. I have been trained basically as a specialty pilot, but not by Starfleet, uh, more from my days in the, uh, Bajoran occupation. Right. You are Lieutenant. Sorry for that. I should have remembered that a little more clearly. Hard times. Sorry to hear about Everything, really. Mm, no problem, sir. Uh, but yes, the auxiliary courses would be a big help. All right, I'll have you signed up for those as soon as I can and make sure I don't uh, get in your way too much. Um, I'll probably... I won't tell you how to do your job. You, your record shows you know your uh, warp cores and dynamics a little more than I do. But I can help you get your feet settled while you go work on your getting that junior pip off and get a proper gold pip on there. Thank you, sir. You have less than two weeks or you're kicked out. That's a joke, Lieutenant. I was kidding. It's against regulations to do that anyway. Of course, sir. Well, I think you've met... Um, I think you've met the whole senior staff. Is there anything else you think you need to see? Uh, nothing I think I need to see unless you have a special rec room where you uh, throw darts at things or shoot small animals. We have a holodeck. Speaking of a captain's rec room, sir, uh, some captains have uh, unique hobbies, and I try to be well read on those just in case you hurt yourself. I can't say that I'm that eccentric, Commander. I have my ready room, I have the officer's mess, and I have my quarters. And other than that, those are the only facilities aboard the ship that are my domain. Oh, but sir, you have to make yourself a little bit eccentric. It gives people a reason to cheer you on. Although they are supposed to be scared of you, but you need to be a little more... What's the word? Uh, lively. You know, take up a hobby, build ships, play tennis, hang gliding. I hear that's fun. Dumb shot. I could teach you dumb shot. That's when a we, fun game. When we transfer to patrolling the course, the core systems, I will take up tennis, Commander. As we patrol the border, I will have to refrain from tennis. Oh, fine, sir. You could take up chess, something military, or martial art. You lead a martial art class, actually. We tried that. Yeah, a lot of injuries, I heard. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you would have thought having a lieutenant who spent time in the KDF would be a great person to lead calisthenics. But well, is. you wouldn't be prepared for the number of injuries that would cause. <laughs> Well, if you're not injured, you're not training right, I think is the phrase in, uh, I can't say it in Klingon, because I will garble the heck out of it. But yes, the sir. lieutenant seemed to think so. But <laughs> I think there was more, uh, it was more Bajoran than it was Klingon. That's true, yes. That is a curiosity, isn't it? But I guess we all are in our own ways. Bajoran? A different, odd in our ways. I mean, I'm a residence where to shoot a phaser and kill people. That's, like, unheard of. There are a fair number of people on Beta Z who share your, or share most Ryzen's hesitation when it comes to 
energy weapons. I sir, but uh, that's the stars, isn't it? It's not all peace and rainbow as much as we want it to be. Well, with any luck, we can make it that way. I sir. Oh, uh, I wanted to speak to you, sir. I think what uh, I wanted to shoot an idea by you. Um, I know we were looking at uh, having a uh, operations manager put into place, but I think I'll hold that post for now so I can watch uh, Caleb's work for a bit and uh, get myself acquainted with all the departments uh, in a technical sense. Uh, it won't interfere with my executive duties. I've had to carry two hats when I served uh, in previous positions. And with a ship this like this, I think we need as many technical heads pointed at the engine and all its charming features as we can. As I said, Commander, you're the master of this vessel. You do as you see fit uh, when it comes to personnel. Well, if the captain takes up tennis, I could just hold the captain's chair for you. But that's not my call, sir. I've never heard of mutiny by tennis, but I think <laughs> it may be new. Well, I thought I'd try a new strategy, but I think it's against regs. Oh, well. Mutiny or tennis? I both, I think. If it's not, it should be. <laughs> All right, Commander. I I have paperwork I've been trying to do for three days now. I'm going to go take care of that. The ship is yours. Oh, sir, is this something you want me to take care of? I don't want you to be buried behind pads if you don't have to be. I was an adjunct for an admiral for a while, so it wouldn't be news to me. Some things require my signature, Commander. <sighs> Got it. I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, any particular plans you want us to hang around a bit before we go to patrol, or uh, are we going to launch out straight away? The Starfleet Intelligence will tell us once they've finished debriefing the officers we have. Until then, you can make ready. I say we'll make ready. I will... I guess we're both heading in the same direction, so... Away to the bridge, I suppose. Nice seeing you, Lieutenant. Uh, don't break anything. Sure thing, sir. Anything so the, else? Then Caleb on to harass Altera a little bit more before she got away. Now that we've got an HR manager, I think I'm fine with this. <laughs> hey. All right. I mean, um, take it away, Callum. Okay. So, uh, literally, just sometime before it doesn't have to be like right away, but before Altera leaves, Callum's gonna try and find her. It doesn't matter where. Yeah, she'd probably be in the mess hall, uh, talking with a few engineers that are off duty and other operations officers, and chatting with them because she's packed up. She's just waiting until she's cleared to leave. Right. So, uh, Caleb's gonna come up near you, and of course, by now, he's wearing his yellow uniform and all that good stuff. And he looks at you and goes, I have one question for you, Ensign. Uh, yes, Lieutenant? Did you get that information I asked you for? Uh, I asked her, and she said she'd get back to me. Uh, she hasn't yet. Sorry. Oh, well. Just ask her yourself, sir. I wanted it to be a surprise. I guess I'll go with the Café des Artistes in uh, France. Oh, please, no. That That is done so often. Do something that you enjoy, something that... Um... That's about you. 
forgive the phrase, but be a man about it. <laughs> that was surprising. I don't know. Picnic on a Bajoran plane or something. I mean, Just... I... Uh... I mean, I could always go with the greenery that is now Kendra Province. See, that way you have something to talk about. Unless you've been to that place and you have eaten their awful food. I was born in Kendra Province. Kendra Province was turned into rubble. I meant Paris. Oh, no, I haven't been to Paris. Yes. Lots of dead animals and eggs. It's terrible. All right, well, thanks anyway, Altera. One piece of advice, one, I suppose, engineer to another. Yes? If it isn't broken, don't try to fix it. If she likes you, she likes you. If she doesn't, shrugs. Other Got than it. that, Good luck. Thanks, Edson. And Caleb heads out. All right. Um, Commander Joan, uh, is there anything you wish to do? in terms for HR related issues that you might have stumbled into oh nothing's been put on my desk the captain's handling everything apparently okay alright you can <laughs> you can handle this slight matter uh, you'll, you'll, once you get to um, I assume eventually you're going to end up in the first officer's office uh, whenever you look up at a pad, you'll see. I will send it to you, and you can do with whatever it you want, so that the doctor can't blame. Oop, there it is. I was looking at the GM's direct messages. So like, why would that be a thing? Just like a captain to throw the blame on somebody else. Tap my uh, ship. Uh, summon Lily Newman to the first officer's office, please. Of course, sir. All right, and then, uh, well, acknowledge. Sorry, computer acknowledge. <laughs> yeah. A few moments pass by, um, and you get a chirp on your door. I should up. Oh, come in, come in. Effect. Gotta stop locking that thing. Um. Yes. Um. She kind of looks at your pips. Uh, Commander. Hello. I stand up and reach up my hand to shake it. Re shake her hand, rather. Right. Lily she, Newman, uh, correct? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Um. Are you are you the new first officer? That I am. Don't worry, you're not in trouble. Oh, uh, I didn't think I was. Um, may I ask why I've been summoned? Uh, I'm understanding that you have an interest in, in uh, staying aboard to look at some xenotechnologies and uh, research. Uh, yes, I, I would like to set up a uh, cybernetics lab here aboard the Sarek, and um, certain uh, xenotechnologies that the Sarek may come across, um, they potentially could be useful in my research. And the or the doctor aboard the Sarek, uh, Doctor Starex, he uh, expressed interest of wanting me to stay on board and help him with, you know certain areas of medicine 
Oh, you mean the uh, the eyes? I believe it was. Well, he does Great. have uh, the sensory augmentation enhancement on his yes. uh, eyes. I believe they were burnt, or uh, they were. He lost them during the war, or with or they Klingon were, disruptor. It was a yeah, Klingon disruptor. They were yeah. scorched out. Yeah. So you'll be uh, a, a personal specialist for him as well, and we're doing research on him. I know more of like being his doctor in that area. Do you believe that'll impact your research capacity aboard ship? I do not, sir. Uh, forgive me, I haven't had a chance to look over your personnel file at the moment, but I figured I'd let you speak for yourself. Um, what is you? What is your specialty in particular? What is the thing that you think will add to the Seric and its continuing missions as a multi-role exploration vessel? I am well versed in like well, like I said earlier, cybernetics, computers. Um, I do have extensive knowledge in xenobiology, um, and I am equipped to handle most uh, medical emergencies. Uh, what rank is she, Lieutenant? Yes. Lieutenant Junior? Full Lieutenant. Full Lieutenant. All right, Lieutenant. Uh, are you looking... Do you see... What sort of ambition do you have? Are you hoping to stay here on this, Eric, and work your way up to some sort of specialty or science officer post? Or are we just a stepping stone to greater things? That's not meant as an insult. That's I'm genuinely curious. I don't know you. So I want to make sure that what you're doing is right for you and right for the ship. Well, for right now, um, sir, I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of my last posting or not. Um, I had a Sadly rather... I am. Well, I had a rather traumatic experience. And with all due respect, sir, I would like to be close with my family. I believe my sister has requested a posting on here as well. I'm working in the astrometrics lab. Yes, that's why the last name seemed familiar. I was I kept wondering why you were interested in medical and not in astrophysics. Puzzling me. It makes sense. Um, well, uh, I don't see any particular reason to tell you no. Um, you seem interested. Uh, I see that uh, the paperwork seems to be in order. Uh, is there a reason I shouldn't? Anything you're not telling me or not telling the captain or try not to offend anybody? Because my job is to make sure you can do your job. And if anything's interfering with that, I would want you to do, let me know. Uh, no, sir. Uh, it's all right there in black and white, except minus a few things here and there that are classified. Oh, uh, by whose authority? Starfleet Intelligence, sir. Ooh, that's that's going to be annoying. Thank you for that warning. Um, well, I'll have to look into that and see if I'm clear to know that. I'm probably not, but hey, don't worry about it. Uh, as for uh, continued uh, work in your area, uh, I'll see if we can get if I can talk the captain around to if you're going to stay with us for longer than say a few months. Um, like a year or so, I'll probably look to see if we can get some advanced laboratories put aboard the Sarek. But otherwise, uh, if you wish to serve in your capacity and your specialty, I see no reason for you not to report to, I believe, uh, to the doctor, and you can assist him. But if at any time you uh, have anything, if you have anything to worry about, feel free to talk to the doctor because he will be your department head in that regard. But if you have anything else you need, anything the ship can provide, please point, put an appointment with me as soon as possible and I will attempt to help you do your job as best as possible. Any questions, concerns? Do you want to run away now while you still have the chance or? No, no. Um, I just You're more lively than other Starfleet officers that I'm used to being around. 
Uh, Rising, it's a thing we pick up. Uh, we're uh, actually friendly. I'm kidding. I, I'm that sort. Don't worry about it. And if at all times you feel overwhelmed, feel free to jump on in. It's not an insult to me, and you're not challenging the uniform. It's you speaking your mind, and that's what we're here to do, not to be a military. Uh, but yeah. Oh, uh, can you be ready to uh, go on duty, say, 0900 tomorrow? Or would you like to sleep until noon? Because you're just starting. I don't want to put too much pressure on you. She, she gives a brief smile. It's like, um, I can report for duty at 0900 tomorrow. Very good. You're uh, due for 0800. You're dismissed. Bye. She kind of blinks a little bit. Like, wait, what? <laughs> And she walks out of the room, dumbfounded <laughs> away. Computer, computer, please don't lock that door anymore. If it chimes, just open it. <coughs> Damn ships with their security measures. Are there any other HR things sitting on my desk that I need to worry about? Unless the captain is briefed on other stuff? I don't believe so. Teague saying how much he hates the... They hate the uh, Calum. You didn't teach me how to do my job. I hate you. But no, I'm good otherwise, though. All right. Um, so several hours pass as the survivors are funneled off the Sarek. Um, Ensign Altera is assigned uh, sort what? of briefly to Narendra. Then, you know, before she's later transferred um, to her next mm -hmm. posting. Um, Narendra try, or chimes in on the bridge of the Sarek, uh, says they are clear to depart. Teeks, take us out, please. Maneuvering, please. And as soon as we're clear, uh, set to the nav point A and uh, take us away at cruising speed, please. I believe he's AFK, but uh, yes. yes, sir. Sorry. Sir, you're right. The I thought I heard. Dart goes back to stick base. And the ship departs Narendra and goes to warp. And with that, we'll finally enter scene two. Oh, there's just one other thing, though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> one other thing. Okay. Uh, Captain, I believe you have a log. Do I? You do now. You do. I said you, like... Oh, it's above all the memes. Give me a second. Yeah. There's so many memes. <laughs> okay, give me a second. All uh, the memes. Captain's log, start date 5382.1.7. We've been assigned back to our normal patrolling sector, and we've been assigned a few astronomical oddities to look over, I guess, to make sure there's no Romulans hiding behind them. All in all, it is. As dull as it sounds. In Captain's Long. Alright. With that, um, we are going to come into main engineering. Uh, currently, Lieutenant Zoe Newman is working um, at a, not at a console, but 
at a panel with a pull apart and stuff kind of everywhere. And uh, Lieutenant Leva comes in and starts arguing and raising a ruckus towards Lieutenant Newman. And Calum, you overhear this. Yeah, uh, Calum's going to walk over and go, ladies, ladies, ladies. What's the problem? You get this sort of sour and angry face of Leva looking at you. He's like, the lieutenant here has been adjusting and taking the main sen- part of the main sensor array offline while I'm trying to do a level 3 diagnostic on the transporter systems. It's throwing all of my diagnostics offline. I have no idea what she's doing. She's got isolator chips spread out over here. She's not putting them back in, and she's She's making a mess of things, Caleb. Please do something about this. Okay, I've heard your side, Le- Rachel. Zoe? And as Lieutenant Newman, as she's got her head sort of in this in the pad of things, like, Lieutenant, can you hand me an ice clearing chip number 61 B? Um,. I need to realign this properly. Like she's kind of ignoring you, and ignoring the yeah, entire uh, argument. Yeah, Caleb's gonna get grab the chip and get down under there with her, like opposite her, looking at what she's doing. She's literally maneuvering isolinear chips around, trying to make them more efficient. <sighs> Can I help you okay, with something, no. Lieutenant? Yeah, have you been taking the main sensor array completely offline? No, it's still online. I'm currently running some studies, but I need... I'm trying to boost the uh, sensor arrays to functions back to proper norms. Uh, it's off by 8 microns. Oh boy, I forget. Oh, hand you know, her the chip. Yeah, it is eight. It's eight microns, well within tolerance, is what I'm getting. It it's just so you know, like eight microns is extremely small. Um, okay. It, yeah. Yeah, it's well within tolerance. Okay, so I'm gonna hand her the chip and go. Okay, but here's the issue I'm having. It's interrupting with transporter diagnostics as well. And last I checked, 8 microns is well within acceptable levels. I informed the transporter room that I was taking part of the main sensor array offline to reconfigure the sensors so that they were performed properly. Um, Lieutenant Levy here just doesn't understand that, you know, she could pull off the level 3 diagnostic for. 20 minutes while I work on this but she seems pretty stubborn about things did you ever think that maybe she had started the level 3 before you started messing with the sensor array I checked the computer logs and she had not started them yet and Levin looks like uh Calum She literally sent me the message just as I hit the button on the diagnosis. She didn't give me proper notice. Uh, Okay. How about we do this? How about we reach a compromise? I'm almost finished here, Lieutenant. There is no need to compromise. My work will be done here in approximately two minutes. That's not what I'm saying, Zoe. You can have your two minutes to get the sensors back operational and everything. That'll give Leva enough time to get back to the transporter room and do her stuff. But please, in the future, let me know before you go messing with anything in engineering. Because I might have something planned 
going on at the exact moment you do. I follow the proper procedure and set notice to all the stations about the main sensor array. Apparently, I mean, it did not. I mean, Lieutenant, Apparently. we were conducting astronomical studies here. Eight microns could literally be detecting life or not on some moon. I'm fairly certain that eight microns of variance does not cause that drastic of a change. We'll find when out here trying, in a minute. When you're trying we'll to find out here in a minute. When you're trying to Lieutenant, when you're trying to find the difference between an amoeba and a bacteria, it's quite helpful having that eight eight micron difference. <sighs> Okay, so we look. Apparently the notice you sent out did not hit my desk, okay? Because if it had of, I would have let Leva know or told you to, to wait for a little bit or asked you to do it a little bit earlier. I don't know. But apparently that notice did not find its way to me. I will try and track down the person responsible if you follow the proper procedures, it's not your fault. I will handle no. this. I, the on alignment came from on the main sensor area. Was it's just, with all due respect, Lieutenant, uh, your maintenance crews do not adequately do proper maintenance, and well, it's let's put it this way: this ship is old. She, she's really right. due for a refit. You're right, this and, ship is old. <laughs> and she plugs the last ice iron chip back in and pushes herself back out and kind of just looks at Leva with beady eyes like this did not need to happen. Leva, meanwhile, is fuming over the issue. I give her that look that she probably knows from having known me for a while of I'll take care of it. It's not going to happen again. We'll talk about it later. And Leva goes, just stop her from modifying the sensors. And she storms off. Well, Lieutenant, I uh, believe your girlfriend is quite angry. Does she have anger issues? Because it, it seems that way. I was trying not I've, to upset her. I found out not to push her buttons. But I'll handle her. Just please, next time before you modify anything, at least let me know directly. Please. She kind of does this kind of uh, sign, like, very well. It's not efficient, but I will do that. Thank you, Lieutenant. And she puts the panel back on and... Well, uh, if you don't mind, I will be in astrometrics conducting more studies. Am I dismissed? Yes. And she walks back over towards the, or heads back out to another section of the ship. Meanwhile, I need a volunteer. Who wants to be in the holodeck? Sure, why not? All right, doctor. You and your wife and the baby are enjoying a peaceful, lovely time in the holodeck. Yep. Your wife, though, does thinks it's a little too warm for the setting. She would rather be spending a nice picnic day on Andoria. Yeah, I talked her into vineyards on family land and 
on beta Z. Uh, on the compromise that we will next time we will you know do Andoria meanwhile doctor you notice something in the holodeck you notice that part of the grid kind of goes offline for a second and then reappears um Neandra did do you see that up yeah, in the corner this uh, I don't know what it's up with holodeck 2 <laughs> sorry flashbacks uh, yeah so many I don't know what the problem is it's always this holodeck there's always something going on that they just it's annoying. Especially in that corner, I believe. I think it's the same corner. It's hard to tell sometimes. Alright. And he and the doctor hits his comm badge, because even in civilian clothes, as a doctor, he's gotta be able to be reached. Uh Doctor Starx to Lieutenant Calum. And I'm guessing Lieutenant Kalem has probably just finished his conversation with Zoe. Yep. He hits his comm badge and goes, Yes, Doctor. And you can hear it in his voice that something has him a little bit stressed out. Ah. Um. There seems to be an issue in Holodeck 2. Uh, do you think you can maybe get a team out here to check it out? Let me run some diagnostics from here, and if necessary, I'll send a team. Very and well. with that, the whole uh, entire holodeck, hold up, the whole entire simulation turns off. It goes back to the grid. I would think this qualifies as something wrong Lieutenant, uh, our program just shut off on its own. And uh, in the background, you also hear your child start crying. Okay. Um, and it, yeah, so basically, I kind of try and motion the Andrew towards the door that, you know, uh, Lieutenant. Um, uh, if you need me, I'll be in my quarters. The baby's not happy at the moment. And we will try to exit. I'll do what I can, Doctor. And I'm also cheating as a parent and empathically scanning my daughter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's... She's fussing all the... Oh, okay. I I was... It, it's more like I'm a paranoid parent. I really want to make sure if this is just normal. I didn't want that to end, and now it ended, so I'm fussing. Or there's something wrong, and, you know, fussing. panic. Fussing. You know yeah. what? That's a good idea. Let's uh, spin two thread here. <laughs> and, uh... Of course, yeah. <laughs> Pork baby. No, I'm, I'm joking. Oh, don't have my thing come to fruition, man. Oh, man. But yeah. Um, they do try to leave Holodeck, too. Okay. And I'm assuming an engineering team you sent over to try to work on the Holodeck. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to run some diagnostics from engineering real quick, because I'm fairly certain I can do that. And send an engineering team, so I can tell them what's going on when they get there. Uh, reason plus uh, engineering. Difficulty zero. Oh, great, okay. 
and I don't have a focus anymore. Well, maybe. EPS power systems? No. Dang it. Okay. Well, you get two momentum. Um, in the holodeck, though, the it, essentially uh, some of the emitter is a feedback in the emitters, um, and they burnt out. No oh, joy. That's gonna be a project. So basically, I'm going to hit my comm badge and go, uh, Tib, or uh, whoever else is there in that direction. Uh, yeah, the hollow emitter's all burned out. I don't know what caused it right now. Is it holodeck too? Yeah, it's holodeck two. That same one. It's always that one emitter. What is wrong with that thing? Well, apparently, according to the doctor, the whole thing went offline. So, and according to my diagnostics, it looks like every single emitter burned out. Oh. Well, on the bright side, nobody's shooting at us, so, you know. That. Yeah, yeah. at least this time we actually have time to get this thing fixed. Huh. Okay, well, I'll do what I can, Lieutenant. Um, it may take us a little bit. Yeah, if you need me, let me know. And okay. As you make conversation... Oh, come on! Back on the bridge of the Sarek, a Romulan warbird decloaks and is hailing. You you wanna you wanna inform somebody? Or, or we've already got a red alert, haven't we? With the red alert, yeah. yes. Okay. I will not wait for the Exo to notify. I'll walk on to the bridge. Status? Romulan ship right in front of us, sir. They just came out of nowhere. Weapons, shields, charged? Uh, as per red alert, yes, sir. No, their weapons and oh. shields, commander. And I step, I look over the panel, uh, double checking that there are their weapons charged. Oh. Uh, no weapons. Stand down weapons, XO. Uh, downgrade to yellow alert or stay at red, sir? Red, but let's uh, let's uh, let's cut the power to the phasers for now. To Carrick, lose the phasers. Aye. Have we got a hail? Uh, they are hailing us at your t at your leisure, sir. Uh, he'll adjust his uniform and stand towards the screen. On screen. On screen now. Um, on the vid um, on the view screen, a Romulan admiral who looks very familiar to you, Captain Starks. Was it, Cap Captain? We need to have a conversation. I should remember his name because it's important, but I don't. So took. So took. I know it was weird and barely pronounceable. It is. Um. We're going to have to decide on Romulan names by committee in the future. Um, yes, yes, that's fine. <laughs> it's your fault. You didn't pick the name. I don't think Ed thought it would be an important character. Um, ah, Admiral Sotuk, I didn't know you were in this region of space. I thought you would have already returned to Romulus. The matter I wish to discuss with you needs to be held in private, Captain. Stand by. We'll um, we'll send instructions to your uh, to your operations and for beaming. 
Sarek out. Uh, and Exo, secure from red alert and bring the shields down. Downgrade to all departments where now it's condition green. Stand down, please. Um... Exo, go ahead and send send the information. I guess confirm with the the admiral if he prefers my ship or his. I'll shoot that a message off right now. And sending now. He says yours is more than fine. <laughs> Have him transported and es es escorted with any entourage to the um, to the conference room. Uh, tell him that our transporters can only accommodate six at a time, and we feel that six is the most that they would need. Hi, right, sir. Uh, do you want the full pomp and circumstance, or you just want a normal uh, escort? He is an admiral, after all. Bring him on board with honors. In fact... You're right. I should meet him there. Yeah. Uh, make the get it. Grab a yeoman and a couple of security officers and meet me down there. Uh, standard uniforms are appropriate, I think. All right, sir. I'll send the messages now. Uh. uh to uh to Carrick, you'll. Oh wait, you're still here, sir. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll get it set up and I'll meet you down there, sir. Good XO, and I'll head towards the transporter room. All right. Uh, when the captain steps off, I'll walk over to Dakarik. Keep a close eye on that warbird. I don't like a Romulan being this close to us and for a random visit like this. We are in agreement. And if you can keep an eye on uh, the captain, make sure he doesn't disappear on us. That'd be good as well. Might be a little paranoid. We're supposed to be allies and all, but it doesn't hurt to be careful. Understood, sir. Do you know the best uh, officers I can bring along for the entourage? Ones that know how to act friendly with brass? Hmm. Sorry, high-ranking officials, flag officers. Uh, are you specifically talking about security or general staff? Among your security department. I have to bring down two anyway, Captain, so. Certainly. I'll provide you with a, a quick list. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, I'll send them down at your leisure. I trust your judgment. Excellent. Uh, you have the bridge otherwise. Don't crash anything. Understood. And he kind of pats you on the shoulder as a sort of... But even with the pat, like he's trying to stay loose, you can tell he's kind of tensed up a little bit. Like he's obviously got a little more guarded now. But not with you. It's like something else is bothering him. Right. On my way down to um, the transporter room, I'll hit my comm badge. Captain to the doctor. This is the doctor. Transporter, one ro transporter room one on the double. Uh, we gotta meet yeah. a, we we got to meet the admiral. Yes, sir. And he kind of just leans into Neandra with holding a screaming baby, kiss her on the cheek, and go, "I'm sorry," and run towards transporter bay one or transporter room one. And she just rolls her eyes, like really. <laughs> of course. I mean. She used to be senior staff. She knows what the deal is. No, it, it's not the, the fact that you know, you're leaving. It's the fact that, you know, it happens during this time. Oh, yeah. 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 Because timing. I'll also send... Um... When we get to the transporter room, I'll fire off a quick message to the captain's wife to also to make her way to the um, if she's interested to make her way to the conference room uh, 
And I'll mention the Admiral by name, because she, she's the one who got me the original meeting with him, so she may be interested to see him. To... Wait, Lieutenant Newman? No, the... No. Uh, the captain's, his, the captain's wife. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I get, yeah, I'm sorry. But I'm, not, I'm intentionally not yep. saying it like an order because that's for obvious reasons. Like, if you want to, you can come up here. This person that you know is here on board right now if you are interested in speaking. Press one. To hear more options, press two. She says she will join you if um, you deem it important. Yeah, she I'll will send your back. Lead on this. Yeah, I'll send back. You could probably help me understand him a little bit better. Because I obviously need something. So, um, yeah, you want her to come along? All right. Um, she will meet with you at the or in the transporter room. Does she actually have a name? Because I'm sure the admiral will greet her by name. Uh, yeah, I can type it in chat. Obviously not a Romulan last name. Unless you married into her. Sorry. Right? Yep. All right. Yeah, the captain's not about to marry into another family. I don't know, He's you got... become a senator. Yeah, there's a civil war that would uh, beg to differ. <laughs> And uh, the last bit, I'm going to spend enough threat to get me uh, two more dice. Okay. Oh, no. S secret rolling. As my experience as Alan teaches me, this is not <laughs> good at all. So you're rolling four dice? Yep. And spending the determination pieces our business toward the uh, auto one. Okay. Are you spending... Two of them at momentum, or are you just you're giving me the threat for that as well? Uh, I, it, the, those dice are coming from threat only. I want to save that momentum in case I glitch. Okay. Uh, complicated. All right. I want to make sure. And uh, my cool things don't help me right now, so bang. That's the wrong you dice. Get a momentum. Oh uh, well, that's right. Uh, what's your <laughs> uh, two lower to so be nine and three. I can't read that. Uh, read the uh, retranslate. Um, so that. yeah, you don't get a momentum, you still but got it. You, you still got it. No. Okay. Nine and three. Yeah, that's eleven or twelve. That's an well, eleven, a four, oh, yeah. a four, and a nine. Yeah. So yeah, no. So, yeah, you get yeah, the momentum. No, you got them all. Okay. You got it all. Mm. I can say that. Type this out. Sorry. Um, yep. All of you entered the uh, who are supposed to be into the transporter room. Yep. I kind of just nod my head in acknowledgement at sorry because I don't want to insult her in any kind of way. It's, it's good to see you kind of thing. Please don't kill me. I'm worried about that. I have a wife with an ice pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moments later, uh, the transporters...
and wife with an ice pick. Admiral? Um, and the Admiral and three bodyguards. One of them is a Reman and one is a female Romulan. Ooh. And I'll say it again. Admiral? Captain? Is there some place we can talk in private? Yes, Admiral, this way. Bridge to Captain. You're... Oh, you're not standing there, are you? No, I'm still up the bridge. Um... I'll give a one moment to the, uh... Admiral, and I'll step over to the console. Captain here. Uh, Captain's ear only... Captain's ears only, sir. Are you okay? To hear, uh, to get transmission. I he will get in his mind. I will escort the uh, the uh, the admiral to the conference room, and then immediately say out loud, um, "If you'd follow me, admiral, I'll I'll take you to the conference room." Sorry, admiral. Ship's business. I'll be right behind you. Uh, sorry. Would you like to join us? them away very well and he kind of looks to um, Serigo and just nods as he follows the doctor as soon as they're out yes XO be advised, there are two uh, Dederodex warbirds cloaked at long range. Makes sense given that they're escorting a flag officer, but wanted to make you aware since I don't think he exactly volunteered that information. Security to um, security to secure the bridge, the armory, the engine room, and the torpedo and phaser rooms. But other than that, normal operating procedure. Aye, sir. And I'll... Anything else, XO? Uh, that's it. That's all, sir. Okay. And At I'll which... head up to the conference room. Yeah. At which point, Neon... Neandra hands off the baby to... Uh... Hands off the baby to Reaver. You got a live okay. mic, Kayla. Oh, and, sorry. you know, goes to, like, an... In- wherever the exosensor the, uh, probably she's right there at six or sick bay so uh, soon so yeah be sick, bay. sick bay too so yeah she would probably okay. just stay right there yeah i have baby things um, in my office it's fine so as you enter the conference room uh, doctor with the admiral he Sora stands looking at, out the uh, conference room window and goes, Does he always keep his guest waiting so long? No, he's usually quite prompt with guests. It's family he keeps waiting. And I just kind of chuckle nervously and kind of side eye at the wife, at the captain's wife. Uh, she's just like, but he should just be kind of here like, momentarily. Very well. Good. And I should have only been about like forty-five seconds behind them, anyways. Yeah, but he's impatient. Oh, okay. Romulan admiral, who knew, right? Say this time, you enter the conference room, Captain. Admiral, I hope uh, hope the doctor's offered you refreshments. He has not, but hopefully I won't be here long. Ah, oh, that's fine. 
Um, I'm sorry, who sir. Is, and in I look, your mind, you go, when did I become your yeoman? I, I look your around mind. to see who's in the room. Uh, the doctor, um, a Riemann bodyguard, you, Sarceri, um, and I guess anyone else in there that you wanted to, or that was the female there was also... guard. You forgot her. No, there were two other Romulan guards. Right, they stayed outside the conference room. By yeah. the conference room doors. I think I'll uh, I'll step over to a panel while I'm talking and and lock the conference room door. I think um, I think everyone in here is already understands any situations that might need to be understood before any conversations would had. I think you can speak freely. And then I'll also yep. tie I'll, while I'm locking the door, I will lock out the computer in this room. Can you trust in, your doctor? This doctor is my heir. He knows as much as I do. And he's aware of the our arrangement. He is quite aware. Very well. I've come to ask for your help, Captain. Despite um, your activities over the past month, at least engaged with uh, some of my people, If only they had told us as such and not raided our station. But regardless, I needed your ships and I made the agreement and I'm here to honor that agreement. Unless, of course, you ask me to help invade the Federation. And he, he chuckles at that. No, no, I've come here to ask you to help save Romulus. Rogue faction has embedded itself on the world and they're mounting an insurrection. I believe this is the work of rogue Starfleet elements and I need a Starfleet captain to deal with it. What does this faction want? Let's just say their goals do not align with the empires. And what are the Empire's goals? They are mine. I wish no harm or war with the Federation. Captain, I merely wish to return Ramas to a point of prosperity it once had. You propose that Romulus withdraw past the demilitarized zone and the Federation stay on its side of the demilitarized zone? Completely? Um, is that by the it? way, the doctor is lie detecting the old fashioned way, using his psychiatry knowledge to just kind of like profile. I mean, I'm using, I think we're all using all of our available te telepathic and empathetic abilities here. Why don't both of you give me an insight command? Difficulty two. I'm going to spend a momentum for a third dice. I'll follow his lead. Psychiatry is a focus for me. Yeah, that'll work. Can I use diplomacy since we're kind of engaged in negotiations? Yeah. 
I, I, I can see that, yeah. Good God. Uh, that's three momentum, but both of you kind of come to the same realization that he's hiding something. Can I spend a momentum to, you know, at, like, figure out what, not exactly what he's hiding, but what area it pertains to from the conversation? Uh, the conversation in terms that um, part of that, and I'll it'll be a momentum spend, but I mean, you have yeah. three floating. Um, at the moment of the conversation that he said, you know, refer to Romulus as his that there was something more and he's hiding something behind that I mean Admiral if you're if you're all for us each maintaining our own side of the border I can agree to that I, I would be interested to know who you see as a possible candidate for emperor. That has yet to be or that has yet to be determined, Captain. And I believe that is uh, none of your concerns. Oh, it's it's tangentially our concern. I mean, more so yours than mine, but. I do ha find it hard to believe that you could ever pass up on the title yourself. Kind of grins a little bit. I wouldn't mind seeing that title one day. However, for what I must do, it's good for the Romulan people and the future of the Raman Star Empire. I don't need you to get involved in our politics, Captain. I need you to deal with these rogue Starfleet elements that are causing sedition and insurrection on my world. Um, before I answer, I'm going to telepath to the doctor. Do you wish to stay in the room? Because if you stay in this room, you know where this goes. Yeah, he, he gets back. Eh, why not? I'll stay. What do you need? Your ship. You're going to want to be a lot more specific than that because I'm not giving it to you. If you need me to use it on your behalf, there may be some negotiation. But you definitely will not be taking the ship. Give me a command plus presence roll. Let's make this difficulty three. Persuasion? Sure. I'll spend... Oh, we have a shit ton of momentum. I'll spend two. So we should be at four. Should be at two. You should be at two. As you spent one momentum... You were at three. The doc spent momentum. You spent momentum. That dropped you to one. Then you gained three. So yeah, you're at technically three. So, oh, I thought yeah. you said we had three floating. So, okay. You had three floating, but... Kalem didn't take it off. So you're actually back at three. Um, yeah, I meant floating normally means above six. That's what confused me. Right. Well, before it was marked down, I said you currently have three. It wasn't marked yet. So. So you get two momentum, which I believe you're at two momentum. Um, yeah. Okay. One of your Starfleet vessels 
is currently in orbit around Romulus. They are working with this foolish senator that is causing issues within the Romulan Senate and the political parties at play. I fear that there's a full-blown um, civil unrest that will be happening soon on Romulus because of these actions of these Starfleet officers. I need you to deal with them and get them off and out of Romulan space. I I believe the promises I made to you will cover me redirecting their attention. Extracting them from Romulan space against orders they may have will cost you more. That being, in particular, the guarantee that any family I have by extension on Romulus will be free from persecution. I have already taken steps to secure your wife's families. And he kind of looks to Sari, and she is secure and well protected. Can I, can I, can I, like, use insight to see if he's implying something like, like prison or like they've been abducted or something? Like, I'm, I'm wondering if it seems like he's playing with words when he says that. I sent you something. Yeah. Good. You'll hand, um, you'll hand me their locations, and once I've made contact with them, I will remove this ship from Romulan space. And he looks to his Riemann guard, and the Riemann guard hands him a pad. He types some things on. You can use this. And what is this? Like, what am I looking at? And, it, and it's a direct line to Romulus. As in, it's active. I hand it over to Sari. And I'm going to telepathically tell her to have your family gather somewhere where we can beam them up. Tell them anyone who's not prepared to beam up, we can't protect. But tell them I will save them. Um, she kind of goes through this, feels like, Admiral, or no, uh, she says, I don't know what, you didn't make up a name for her, so, um, she'll go, Mother, um, I hope the Admiral has, um, done his duty and has protected you. Um, we might be potentially on our way there, um, so please stay safe and keep everyone together. And um, I'm not going to roleplay because I feel like I'm like roleplaying with myself here. Um, she just kind of acknowledges and then the transmission goes off. And he looks to you. He's like, now give me a, um, with that, I want a control plus command. And this is going to be, if you have composure, I allow that focus. Uh, no, but judging by the fact that the doctor is there, can I use lead by example? Because in things like this, I would be trying to show the doctor who I've nominated as my heir how to lead our family and how to deal in family matters. So I would want him to see that in action. And that's yeah, a yeah, talent, it can be useful. Right? No, lead by example. It's a focus. It's a focus. Yeah, yeah. 
Right, you're talking about follow my lead. Yeah. Um, this is what I have more in mind of, like, you to keep your composure um, that, as you were kind of like, directing. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm trying to okay. keep my composure because uh, for his benefit so he sees what the head of the family should act like. That's the argument for lead by example. He's keeping his composure to make this a learning moment. All right. And what was the difficulty? Uh, it's going to be a post. Oh. In that case, we're going to, you know, all the stops. Uh, you know what? Why not? A, a determination spend on a captain's word, word is worth its weight in gold pressed platinum. Hey, termination is that? Uh, as in my my yeah my yeah, yeah my I word know. is as valuable as it can like it's extremely valuable is the is the value or at least he believes his word is valuable. Okay. I'm having this meeting with him. All right, uh, but your difficulty is looks like it's five. Okay, then I'll buy up to four dice. Uh, so that's two momentum and one threat. Yeah. Oh no, five. No, no, you're spending termination. So two momentum and three ahead. threat. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh hell, beat him. Well, you got two momentum out of that, and he does not. Uh, detect your motives are you uh, satisfied captain uh yes I will tell you that it's outside of my purview to know what ship you're talking about do you do you have any reconnaissance I do not they've been jamming their I should say the sensors in the area have, or the subspace uh, communications and sensors have been disruptive. And you can do it, and I will can do a pose roll here. And I'll let you use Insight Command to figure out if he's lying to you or not. Uh, well, I can only... Yeah, I'll buy three dice. And... I don't have so Two anything. momentum I... and a threat? Yeah. It is no, a draw. I, did I say four dice? I only bought three. Oh, I thought you said four. Well, I only rolled three, so it was only one momentum. Right. Whatever I said, I did not do it. Um... Yeah, so what were you going to say? It is a draw. With that, um, so in a way, you, you it seems fishy that he wouldn't know, but you could also see at the same point that, you know, if they're Section 31 or some rogue faction, they would probably be uh, not broadcasting their identity. I'm going to turn and look out the window of the bay for a second. Okay, Admiral. Um, it would be of great help if you would... Um, if you would make way towards Romulus for at least an hour or two to give the impression that that's where you're traveling. For your own sake, uh, Captain, 
you'll need to travel with us through Romulan space. There are not many right now that would... There are many in the fleet that are not part of my own that will attack you on sight. It's even better. Although... It would be much better if this appeared as a chase. So if you could fly, maybe... slightly ahead of us. How far ahead? I'm going to do some quick math in my head to see how far away Romulus is at um, max at cruising speed. Oh, it, it's going to take you days to get there. Okay. Why don't you spend a couple of hours at maximum and then hit your cruising speed and we'll follow at cruising speed. That should let you get a little ways ahead of us but not so far enough that you couldn't provide protection. Very well. Did you want to stay for dinner? Or would you like to leave now? Um, I would not... Uh... Captain, as I say, it just shouldn't take long. Uh, we need to depart immediately. Time is of the es essence here. Maybe in the future. All right, Admiral. Um, I think the doctor here can show you to the transporter room. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he looks to... He kind of nods, he looks to Sari, he's like, don't worry about your mother. She's fine. As he exits the room with the doctor. And I take him to the transporter room. I'll turn around and look at her and say, it's going to be incredibly difficult to find them on a planet full of I'm going to do as much as I can to get you help in searching for them but I'm going to need you to find them when we get to the planet I don't know if I will be able to personally look for them I can't arouse too much suspicion here but I have every intention of saving them thank you uh, I just the admiral is he's usually an honorable person but he's I would not dare say this if I was on Romulus, but he is was former Tal Shiar. And not all of his ways are accepted among my people. Please do tread carefully on this. I fear that he is using you. We're using each other. Without his help, the Federation would not exist anymore. So, I owe him at least some debt of gratitude. And while I don't want him on the throne, it's better to have him on the throne than Romulus in Civil War. 
because one or both sides would definitely bring in both the Federation and the Klingons and our whole post-Dominion alliance would be gone. At least this way it's going to take him 10 to 15 years to reorganize the Empire. I've got to go back onto the bridge. The EXO is going to be... It's going to be an effort to get around him. I'll see you tonight. Yep. And he looks very, like, like he's... Mind is running a thousand miles an hour trying to figure out what's supposed to happen next. All right. Um, the um, sorry, the admiral has uh, beamed aboard the, his uh, ship, and they go to warp. Um, I'm gonna, as that's happening, I'm gonna be coming out onto the bridge. XO. Captain. Red alert and take a follow them at uh, cruising speed. Red alert, general quarters. Entities, please bring us to uh, cruising speed to chase the target. I didn't realize it until he was off the ship, but he is wanted in the in Federation space. And I know that he's going to Romulus, and I think we can get him before he gets there. But it's going to take a couple of days, so we're going to have to pace ourselves. We'll try to overtake him by the time he gets to the border. Give me a presence command. Um, And, Commander, if you want to give me an insight command. Hell yeah. It's going to be opposed. Well, I'm going to use Persuasion and roll all the dice. So I'll... Oh, sorry, go on. I'll spend a momentum and I guess four... Three. Uh, are you... Oh, this will be five threat. Oh, five threat, yeah. And... Commander? Uh, would I be able to lean into the gambling focus? Someone trying to bluff me? You know what? That is actually success. Uh, I will accept that. And He's trying to put on his best poker face. And I need enough threat to get me to five dice. You can't. So oh, wait. Five I th- threat. Never mind. I thought you were spending determination for some reason. Yeah, I can't. I don't have the veteran cool power anymore. That's somebody else. You've already spent That's it. Yes. Yeah, so, oh yeah, I spent so, it. Already. Yep. So six or uh, six threat. This is uh, reminded me of a Monday game. I can bring a board cube right now. It's actually, two of them. Aww. Ooh, can I get to reroll one of those d twenty because I'm open and insightful. Uh yes, you can. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. Hey. So, let's see, I got, is that seven from the commander, six from the captain. So, yes, commander, your captain is, I'll show you a better, better term, he's not telling you the whole truth. In fact, he Suspect that he's lying about something. Hi, right, sir. We'll uh, pace ourselves. Uh, would I be able to get a short briefing with you to get the full details? You know this admiral better than I do. I think Takara can hold the bridge for the time being while we step away briefly. Yes, that's fine. Um, Lieutenant Takara. character you have the bridge and I don't want to attract any other Romulans that may be in the area so we're radio silence from this point uh, 
Understood, Captain. Should I take any additional precautions? No outgoing communications from the ship. Understood. I will advise uh, communication. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, Commander. And I'll point towards my radio. Aye, sir. Oh, and Lieutenant, uh, be sure to keep an eye on those cloaked ships. Make sure they don't turn around on us, right? Your bridge. And I'll step away at that point with that little warning. Yes, Commander. Captain, what's going on? I've gambled almost all my life, and you just tried to bluff me. I'm not going to call you out on the bridge, but I'm, I'm your XO. I need to know what's going on. Especially since we just didn't tell the Admiralty that we just took off our assigned mission brief, and we didn't tell the strategic operations where we're going. What's going on, sir? We are under orders to keep this admiral in particular under an eye. He's been here trying to solicit help because he thinks he can be emperor. Right now, we're following him in an effort to make sure that he doesn't come into contact with other Starfleet vessels. Uh, we're under orders, sir? We are. May I see those orders, please? You may not. They are above your clearance. Captain, look. I've flown with some shady deals, and I've dealt with the Breen. Um, and I fought in the war. Sometimes we have to do funny things out here, and you're the captain, but... Frankly, sir, you've pulled this sort of thing before. Now, I'm not here to shout my lungs out to the Admiralty, because I don't get the feeling from your file that you're out to do anything against the ship or the Federation. But I need to know what's going on, sir. If I'm walking around blind, I'm going to blunder into something, and I'm not going to know why. Are you suggesting, Lieutenant, that I would exceed my orders and jeopardize the Federation? In private, yes, sir. And out there, no, sir. As far as I'm concerned, you haven't broken any laws. Something's wrong, you're dealing with it. You're just not telling me anything. At this point, Commander, I don't see what in this situation could lead you to believe anything other than we're following orders. You've certainly been in situations where you did not have a clearance required to understand the full picture. Slight problem, Captain. I would have been briefed on this, Admiral. I worked under Rear Admiral Ludwinger before I transferred over, and they briefed me heavily on this ship to make sure I was able to come on board with my feet running. So, unless the Admiral decided to sandbag me because I pissed them off, um, I have reason to believe something's up. As you said, if... You should know about this admiral if it was something that you were supposed to know. Judging by the fact that you don't know, it's obviously something you're not supposed to know. Captain, you're not making this easy. Oh, I step away and just kind of look around the room, take a breath. Commander, last time I was in your position, I took the high road thinking that the Federation had some bright idea that would save me, and I was court-martialed for illegally arresting a Federation citizen. So I advise you that sometime, at least in this fleet, we receive orders we don't understand and may seem contrary. And if you try and demand that explanation be given, you might damn your career. Then damn my career, Captain. My job's to keep you safe in this ship, I turn around. 
if that's your opinion, then I will not hold it against you if you wait out this mission in your quarters. No, sir, I'm your executive officer, and as far as I understand it, you haven't broken any laws. You're just skipping protocol. I'm only skipping protocol if you think that I don't have orders. Oh, you need to play more poker, but that's neither here nor there, sir. Oh, damn it. That is definitely a personal insult, Commander, and I'll let it slide now. I will not let it slide again. The Starxes happen to be excellent poker players. Good for them. This one's not. Because um, I haven't played them. Anyway. Uh, well, Captain, you can take it that way all you want. Um, but I'm your second in command. And until I see you breaking contravenes of the standing orders of Starfleet, I see no reason to take further action. Uh, just... Can you can you answer me one thing? As long as it's not classified. Whatever it is you're doing, is this in the interest of the Federation? I'm shocked that you would think that anything the Admiral or the Admiralty ordered would not be in the best interest of the Federation. Admirals make mistakes, sir. I'm asking if that's what's happening or we're perfectly fine and there's nothing for me to worry about. I've been trying to convince you for seven minutes now that nothing is the out of the ordinary. I don't know what you would like me to say, Commander. Any other preparations we need to do while chasing down this Admiral friend of yours? We have no radio silence and we're an ambassador class. Chains us down three to Daredexes into Romulan territory. I hope there's a bigger plan here than just hoping we catch them in time. You know classified information I don't, sir. So if there's uh, a cavalry on the way, that'd be great. Are we getting a, a comm? Captain, this is Lieutenant Newman in uh, the Astrometrics. Um, I've been monitoring certain activity, but one of the galaxy class starships that was on patrol near Ramos has diverted and is on an intercept course. At least judging for from these readings. On us? Yes, sir. Did you get a classification for that ship? Name and uh, Yes, sir. It's the uh, USS uh, Aegis. The Aegis? Looks like you're not the only one uninformed, Commander. Aye, uh, sir. This is about to get very dicey. We're going to have to lie to fellow members of Starfleet because they are not allowed to know what we're doing. Wait. Out of character, did he just say that to me? Or is that you saying that I out of character? I believe so. No, okay. I said that to you. Okay. I just kind of blink and nod. Okay. If you're not authorized to know, Commander, wouldn't you assume there are other people not authorized to know? I assume nothing, sir. Although I will, I will look into this ship and see what it's uh, up to out here. It's not part of the 10th Expeditionary off the top of my head, but uh, I'll look into it more deeply, sir. See why they're coming our way. 
before yeah. before we before we do anything else or respond to this, I will leave you with one parting piece of advice, Commander. Always listen. I to have you. I have obviously been unable to convince you that these are our orders. Although that is only slightly concerning to me because I expect you to follow my orders to a T. I will say that you are free to do whatever you feel is necessary to do, but that you must understand the consequences if you interrupt something you are not allowed to know. You're going to have to wait and make that decision on your own. I think we're needed on the bridge, Commander. Aye, Captain. To Carrick. Yes, Captain. Uh, what do you want to do about this starship? This galaxy class starship. It's on an inner. I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk over to Takirik's console and ask, uh, Lieutenant, would you mind standing aside? Uh, she sparks an eyebrow, but moves us. I like how it's now become a verb. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to, as loudly and obviously as possible, in all directions from the ship, um, broadcast, uh, Sarek to Aegis, do you need assistance? USS Sarek, this is Captain Griffin. Why have you, or why are you chasing a Romulan vessel, and why are you have or entered into, uh, put it bluntly, radio silence? You must have a very impressive crew if you can tell that there's a lack of communication coming from a starship that you rarely we've been deal trying with, to captain. hail you I... captain we've been trying to hail you while you're on your I... pursuit course with the Raman asking if you need assistance it is damn impeculiar captain as to why you are re using radio silence on a pursuit <laughs> and not have asked for assistance from other federation vessels let alone a Derek's class vessel or the Derek class warbird. Um, Captain, if you would like to contact me on more secure channels, I may be able to enlighten you, but on these channels, I have orders that prevent me from discussing my actions. Give me a command presence roll. Well, I guess I'm spending threat. Maybe we'll get some momentum. Oh, I'll justify it that way. I'll say I'm generating momentum. Let's buy five <laughs> dice. Oh, With wow. Persuasion. No, Starfleet protocols, because I'm abusing them. <laughs> OK, that seems fitting. But I'm going to spend uh, that six art you gave me to roll an insight command. But he's also a Ryzen, so. <laughs> but he's also. <laughs> unfortunately, no, he's humid. Uh, 
do we get two momentum from that? I'm count. Yes, you do. Promise and to regenerate. Very well. Um, as you, I guess, retreating to your ready room. I'll put the necessary commands to bring up the captain. Very, um, the image transfers um, with Captain Griffin, or yeah, Griffin. He is, you know, kind of middle aged, um, but you see an image of his view screen of the typical galaxy class ready room. Captain, I need an explanation. I'm not going to divert my vessel. Do you require assistance on this matter? Because going after a Diderik's uh, class uh, warship is uh, quite a feat. I I think I've heard of you, Captain, and I, I think I remember uh, feeling a degree of respect when I learned about you. And... I think I learned enough to know that you are f very capable of seeing things that are left unsaid. And I have orders that require me to say a lot of things left unsaid. I'm not currently in high pursuit of any Romulan vessels. I do not expect to engage in combat with any Romulan vessels. I do have orders that require me to observe rather closely some suspected threats to the Federation, but I have no standing orders to pursue or engage any to dare to exit. And at this time, I have not seen anything on my sensors that would suggest that there were any to dare to exes threatening me or attempting to engage me. Although I can't divulge my actual orders, I hope um, I hope um, you understand. Give me presence uh, command. It's going to be opposed. I can't be destroyed by a Romulan warbird unless I spend threat. So we're going to buy five dice again and. Roll with the uh, persuade or Starfleet protocols, whatever it helps. It, it, no, this don't, is going to be a deception take... roll. This is going to be a deception roll. So yeah, oh, you have okay. two momentum, but you're giving me six threat. Yeah, I'm not spending the momentum, and but persuasion works in that case, doesn't it? No, because persuade. Because I'm persuading someone. It, uh... Yeah, but I'm persuading someone to believe something I want them to believe. <laughs> That's a deception, though, Focus. That, that's going to be a definitely a deception roll. Because you're, you're lying to your to a star, lying to someone who's trained. But I'm trying to persuade him not to not to call me on it. Okay. Like I am lying to you, but don't call me on it. You're trying to cover a lie with a lie is what you're trying to do. I didn't lie to him, though. I didn't lie to him. I only... Yeah, I did lie by omission. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> so, I'm rolling five dice for insight command. Ooh. 
and his ship explodes. Right? Well, that was a fun little angel and devil on each side of the head conversation. That was really cool right there. <laughs> and I'm going to spend a three threat to activate his determination to re-roll two dice. And I'm actually going um, to re-roll that. I don't have to get rid of that the complication that way. So yeah. Uh, so does the tie go to the, the person who, like... No. You can succeed. Who does it go to? It, no, you can succeed at cost. Oh, we'll do it. You, <laughs> so you're giving me two or threat. Yes. Uh, or or there will be a complication. No, and we're succeeding at cost. Okay. So... We... I mean, threat, complication, synonymous. Very well, the Captain. Threats are, the threats at this point are me losing my character, so... Well, that is true. Let's, um, let's, be, let's tread carefully here. With complications. Very well, Captain. However, my ship is going to remain in close proximity um, in case anything comes awry. You are not to... I have been ordered to monitor all Starfleet vessels in this area. You are not to enter Romulan space at any cost. Is that understood? The minute that roll word enters Romulan space, you are to return back to your normal patrol pattern. That's, um... That contradicts my orders, so... I'll have to get back to you. I have my standing orders too, Captain, and no Federation vessels are to enter Romulan space. And I tend to keep it that, that way. If if standing orders could not be overridden, then no one would ever enter the Parliament building because the guards would refuse them because they have standing orders not to let people will in willy-nilly. Sometimes some orders or in some some prerogatives override others I will be talking to the Admiralty so that you will receive communication to convince you that you are overstepping yours Sarah I'll Dow tell you Captain and if, are you closing the comm signal right there as much as I want to no <laughs> 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 Captain, oh, unless you give me authorization from someone of a higher power, I have a duty. And um, you're going to have to con or, uh, contact the authorities that gave you those orders, and they're going to have to forward them to me. You should receive... Uh... You should receive all information you need to convince you shortly. Uh, Sarek out. And the channel closes. To Carrick. Now I'll press on my little my little button to call somebody. Yes, Captain. Put out a um, wide beam open communication. Um, USS Sarek to command requesting that you send all available information to the USS Aegis to convince them uh, not to pursue us past Romulan space. Are you asking me to contact uh, Starfleet Command for? I'm sorry. What exactly? I need you to trans. I need you to send that exactly what I said, and I can't. I cannot ask you yes, to send sir. it to anyone in particular because if I asked you to send it to someone in particular, it would violate my orders. 
it has to be wide game. Yes, sir. Uh, understood. Very puzzled. I think she follows the order. I hope that someone understands where this is going, but I don't really think someone does. It's starting to become clear that it's starting to become clear that someone doesn't understand where this is going. (laughs) Oh, I do. I get it. I get it very much. I'm not the person you want to get it, but I do get it. So on that, you send out the transmission. Oh, come on. Romulans are always so damn nosy. Sorry. I cannot confirm or deny that I had any intention of anything the doctor's talking about. (laughs) So, um, I will create an advantage for you if you allow me to spend those two momentum. Done. I think I need you to create that advantage. (laughs) So, yes. As you start itching closer and closer to the Romulan uh, neutral zone, the two Diderix warbirds um, decloak and begin to open fire on the USS Aegis. Oh, shikies. Captain to the bridge. I walk onto the bridge. Status. We have two of the the cloaked warbirds just turned around and opened fire on the Aegis. Should I raise the weapons and shields and uh, return fire, Captain? All power to weapons and shields. Engage the closest warbird. Hi, Captain. Okay. And with that, uh, I think we're going to call it here for tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you, you. Oh, Captain. Uh, 